So the twelfth and the final theme of this course uh, focuses on the limited dependent variables. And by the limited dependent variables we refer to, for example, uh, uh, binary response variables where the y variable can take uh, uh, zero or one values only. Or it can be also that the dependent variable y is uh, censored or truncated. I'll come back to the meaning of, uh, of that uh, in another video. But first, um, in the estimation of regression uh, variables with limited dependent variables, uh, uh, we normally employ a so-called maximum likelihood estimation. So the purpose of the first video is to introduce to the idea of the maximum likelihood framework and uh, also illustrate it in the case of the classic linear regression model, because we can also estimate the regression model not just in OLS, uh, but, uh, but uh, also in maximum likelihood estimation framework. So, firstly, let me try to give you the general idea of the maximum likelihood. So, firstly, let's think about the, our regression model. I have here phrased it in the case of the single regression of single x variable only. So, think about our model, like for example, this our linear equation and our related assumptions about the error term. Uh, we can think about it as a data generating process, often abbreviated as DGP. So, for example, if you would do some kind of computer simulation, uh, you could randomly generate some values of x, you have some kind of fixed values of alphas and betas, and you randomly generate also some epsilons. And then as a result, you have some kind of uh, simulated data set. And uh, in reality, the situation is also kind of similar, that there is some, some kind of underlying uh, data generating process going on that we try to understand. Uh, and as a result, we, we observe some empirical sample, some uh, yi, xi. So, the question then in is that, okay, what if we reverse this process? So we, we start from this observed data of y's and x's. So the question that we then ask in the maximum likelihood estimation is, uh, given these observed data, uh, which parameter values would be the most likely that had generated this kind of data? So that is the basic rationale of the, of the maximum likelihood estimation. So let me then next go a little bit more formally. So, so typically in maximum likelihood estimation, then we work with some uh, uh, probability distribution functions. So let, let me denote by lowercase f this uh, probability density function of the, of the random variable. And uh, we work with the conditional distribution. So it's conditional on parameters beta. And uh, the typical assumption in the, in the maximum likelihood estimation is that our, our observations are ID, identically and independently distributed. So you might encounter this abbreviation IID very often. So that is convenient because then if we have the joint distribution of our, our observed data, so joint distribution of uh, Y1 to Yn conditional on the, on the parameters beta, then if this iid assumption holds so if the if this each observation is identically and independently distributed so this independence allows us to then write this joint density as the product of uh, of n n um, sort of marginal density so so then it is kind of product of the probability density uh, in in each uh, each observation yi conditional on beta so without this IID assumption, then we would need to model this uh, uh, joint distribution, which is a bit more complicated. So that's a, that's a very convenient assumption, if it is true, of course. Okay, so this is this kind of like, a, uh, still this kind of like a moving from the DGP towards data. So given the parameters beta, so given the data generating process, this uh, probability density is kind of indicating how likely we have this kind of uh, uh, given sample, given the, the underlying model characterized by these beta parameters. So then when we want to reverse the process, then uh, what we need to introduce is the so-called likelihood function. So notice that the, this uh, uh, probability density function is, uh, is a function of y conditional on beta, but uh, uh, 
we can define this likelihood function and, and we, we, we define it so that, that this likelihood of these beta parameters is now conditional on our observed data. So this comes to this uh, so-called uh, Bayesian uh, uh, inference uh, that, uh, that uh, we sort of reverse this, uh, this uh, process. So this kind of uh, formula can be justified by the so-called Bayes rule. And um, so then the likelihood function is exactly what we, what we wanted to have this reverse the process that, okay, what is the probability of parameters beta conditional on the, on the observed data? Okay, so this is what I want to highlight this, this connection between the probability distribution and the, and the, and the likelihood function. So, and, and now, we, now we ask, what is the probability of beta parameters conditional on data? Whereas usually when we start with this uh, model, which is uh, kind of explaining what is the data generating process, there, there we can then infer what is the probability of data conditional on parameters. So this is the basic idea of the of the maximum likelihood estimation. So far, it's, it has been presented at very abstract level. So let me get to a more more specific uh, example shortly. But before I go there, then one more point. So typically, we find it more convenient to work with the so-called uh, log likelihood function. We take a natural logarithm of the of the of the likelihood function, and. Um, uh, in this sense, then we don't need to work with the product of the of the density functions, but rather we can take uh, some of the logarithms of the of the density functions. So that that is typically just for sake of convenience that we work with the sum rather than product, and especially for when we do some uh, numerical uh, optimization, then this uh, sum sum of the logarithms is is much more convenient than taking a product. Okay. So then, then this uh, this leads us to some so-called maximum likelihood problem. So, so then we will optimize these uh, parameters beta to maximize the value of the log likelihood function. So this is what I meant by saying that okay, which parameter values are most likely? So, so we will uh, then if the if there is a unique solution to this maximum likelihood problem, then then uh, then these are the maximum likelihood estimates. Okay. So sometimes this uh, maximum likelihood problem can be solved analytically. So you take uh, take some paper and pen and uh, differentiate the log likelihood function. But very often there is not such kind of analytical closed form solution available. So then we need to resort to some numerical algorithms. And these numerical solutions then there exist, of course, uh, uh, for example, in statistical packages like like Stata or or R or whatever you might want to use. Then there exists this kind of numerical solvers to do that. So as I mentioned, let's then go to the illustrative example. And uh, it's helpful to start with this uh, classic linear regression model that we have considered throughout the course. So I will now focus just on the single regression case and, uh, and uh, kind of highlight the differences compared to the usual uh, or the classic OLS estimator that we started with the course. Okay. So the same linear regression model we can also estimate uh, by other than OLS. Of course, we have earlier encountered, for example, the instrumental variables estimator. So there exist different kind of uh, approaches to estimate the same model, and maximum likelihood is, is one of them. So uh, we will then, in the following video lectures, we will then use the maximum likelihood estimator to, to then deal with the limited dependent variables. But uh, it's useful to first understand, okay, how does the maximum likelihood uh, estimation work when, when we do not have this kind of uh, restrictions on the, uh, on the dependent variable y. So first step to, to deviate from the OLS. Uh, so remember that in OLS, we never, never really invoke this IID assumption. So, so uh, we did allow for for or we did consider also the possibility of heteroscedasticity, for example. But now, now we need to assume that this uh, error term epsilon is uh, identically and independently distributed. And in addition to that, we also need to assume some kind of parametric assumption. So, so let's assume that uh, epsilon is normally distributed with zero mean and some constant uh, and finite variance. So. 
this is perhaps one of the reasons why some textbooks then uh, immediately impose the normality assumption because then then you can also use the maximum likelihood estimation. But if you just stick to the OLS, then the normality was not really critical for the statistical properties and not even for the statistical inferences if we if you rely on the asymptotic normality of the of the of the OLS estimator. So when we go then to this uh, to this uh, distribution of epsilon then it's convenient to notice that we can always rewrite the, the regression equation so that epsilon is equal to y minus beta 1 minus beta 2 times x. Okay, so then we can start to, to take this epsilon and plug in this, uh, this uh, other part of the regression equation. So, so this, this uh, more deterministic part of the regression equation within the, the um, known density function of the normal distribution. Okay, so then having that, then let's then recall the what is the density function of the normal distribution. So this was the reason why we imposed the normality, because then the density function f is, is known for the normal distribution. And uh, uh, don't worry if the, if the equation might look a little bit uh, scary at first or intimidating even. Uh, this is something that I'm sure that you have seen uh, seen already in the secondary school. So uh, you know this uh, usual bell-shaped uh, um, bell-shaped density function of the normal distribution. So this is the function that characterizes this bell bell-shaped curve. And now what what makes this formula maybe look a little bit more intimidating is that because instead of this uh, epsilon, I have now plugged in there this uh, y minus beta one minus beta 2 times x. But anyway, this is just the usual usual formula of the of the normal distribution with the and I have here denoted the standard deviation of the normal this error term by sigma. So sigma is the standard deviation. Uh, pi is just this uh, constant and uh, and uh, if you if you have some somewhere the formula for the for the usual normal distribution then just you can remind yourself that this is exactly the the formula for this uh, bell-shaped Gaussian uh, density function of the normal distribution that you are familiar with. Okay, so that's the middle middle equation. I have just there inserted this uh, this y minus beta one minus beta two times x. So next step, then, what we need to do is then also to to take the natural logarithm of this equation because uh, we will need that then for this uh, maximum likelihood problem. Okay, so if we take the logarithm of this uh, this uh, density function f, then uh, I don't go through all of this step in detail, but you can just remind yourself what are the the logarithm rules. So so uh, then if we have a ratio like one divided by sigma, so the logarithm is minus logarithm of sigma, and and so on and so on. So. Uh, that will give give them this logarithm of the density function. Again, it might might look a bit intimidating, but uh, but don't worry. We just uh, this is somehow how this uh, this maximum likelihood formulas often look like a bit tedious, but uh, but there's nothing really that bad if you just uh, go through with thought and uh, and uh, see what this uh, what is each uh, uh, each symbol means in the formula. Okay. So then next we will form the maximum likelihood uh, uh, problems or, or, or in some sense we first rewrite this log likelihood function. So now when we sum over these uh, all observations, notice that there was this uh, lo minus logarithm of sigma. So that's just a constant and now I have used directly here this, uh, this uh, rules of the sigma operator. So when we sum over constant n times, it's the same as n times this constant. So that's why this first part, this, uh, we have this minus n times log of, uh, of sigma minus one half times n times log of uh, uh, two times pi. So this n enters here because we just sum over, over some constant. But then this third component, uh, there we have this yi's and xi's. Uh, so there we need to then sum over these observations i because that's no longer constant. So there this uh, sum uh, sum becomes. 
So that's the log likelihood function that we need to need to maximize. And uh, notice, of course, that uh, that uh, when we maximize the log likelihood function, if you now for a moment ignore these constant terms in the beginning and just look at this sigma uh, sigma component. So this is actually the same objective that we always minimized in the OLS problem. So we minimize the sum of squared uh, deviations. Uh, and uh, now when we want to maximize the log likelihood function, notice that there is the minus sign in front of the sigma operator. So in some sense, this, this comes actually the same optimization problem as maximizing the like log likelihood function because there's this minus sign is actually uh, equivalent to minimizing this uh, sum of squares. So we will see that a little bit later. Okay. So what do we need to do then if you if you want to have an analytical solution to this uh, ma log maximum likelihood problem? So we our purpose is to maximize this LNL function. And we have three unknowns here. So in the single regression case, we have three unknowns. So it's uh, beta one, there is beta two, and then there is the parameter sigma that is the standard deviation of the error term epsilon. So the analytical solution would be then to uh, take the partial derivatives with respect to each three unknown variables and then set those equal to zero. So those are the three first order conditions that I have uh, stated below here. Okay, so that's just a standard uh, um, optimization, unconstrained optimization, because there's not any, any constraints. There is just this objective function, this log likelihood function that we, that we want to maximize. So then the analytical solution will then, then be found in this, in this uh, um, value of beta 1, beta 2, and sigma, uh, where these first order conditions will be, will be satisfied. And then we can check that it's verified that it is indeed the maximum. So I don't go to this, uh, this kind of uh, basic mathematical operations more, more in detail. So you can then solve this kind of uh, three equations. And uh, actually we did this already in the context of the OLS estimator. So you can actually just verify that this uh, first order conditions of the of the maximum likelihood problem are actually just the same as what we have earlier encountered in the OLS estimator. And indeed, uh, uh, we find that this uh, maximum likelihood estimator for the, for the intercept term beta 1 is just the average of, uh, of, uh, of y's. Uh, um, so here, notice that uh, this, uh, this y upper bar, it shouldn't have this subscript i and uh, x upper bar also shouldn't have the subscript i. So it's just the average of y and average of x. So I will delete those uh, subscripts from the, from the slides that I will put to, the, uh, put to the course materials. Sorry about that. And then we also find for this uh, in slope coefficient beta 2, the estimator is uh, sample covariance of y and x divided by sample variance of x. So you can also verify that, that it's just the same as the OLS estimator. Uh, there is, however, one difference. So, so of course, in the OLS, we did not uh, need to need to uh, have this parameter sigma explicitly, but here is an interesting uh, uh, difference also that uh, that it turns out that the the variance of the error term, so the maximum likelihood estimator of the variance, is just uh, just this uh, sum of squares of the residuals e uh, divided by n. And uh, usually we use for the sample variance this uh, the sum of squares of e divided by n minus one or n minus k when it is uh, when it is uh, multiple regression case. So notice here that its maximum likelihood estimator is slightly different. We divide only by n, and it can be shown that this maximum likelihood estimator is uh, is actually biased in a, in any any finite sample. However, it is consistent. So when the sample size n approaches to infinity, then it doesn't matter if we subtract the value of one. So, so n and n minus one are almost the same when we get the very large n. So asymptotically, when sample size approaches to infinity, it doesn't really matter. But in the, in the finite sample, the maximum likelihood estimator is actually slightly biased. 
So in some sense, this is also a general property of the maximum likelihood estimators that uh, typically maximum likelihood estimators are consistent if all the, all the uh, assumptions and these kind of uh, parametric specifications are correct, but, uh, but it's possible that there is some, some um, bias in the finite sample. Another notational thing is that, uh, that uh, in the maximum likelihood estimation, it is very common to use this, uh, put the hat, hat on top of this uh, estimator. So I have used here this beta hat one and beta hat two rather than B one and B two. So in OLS framework, we typically use this B as the estimator, but in, in maximum likelihood, this, uh, this, uh, it's more standard to use this hat symbol for the, for the estimator. Of course, this is somewhat somewhat uh, blurred, so it's not always that, that that in OLS you would use B and and beta hat in maximum likelihood, but but that's very common, very common notation though. Okay, but I hope that this this illustrated the the idea that that, that how this uh, maximum likelihood estimation uh, differs for compared to the OLS. So. So in OLS case, we started directly from this, uh, this uh, minimization of the sum of squares of, uh, of residuals. In maximum likelihood, we made more detailed assumption about the, uh, what is the parametric distribution of the error term epsilon. We imposed this IID assumption to derive the, the log likelihood function. And um, so, but in the end, actually, the maximum likelihood problem was, uh, was uh, uh, turned out to be almost identical to the OLS estimator. So, so in that sense, these parameter estimates from OLS would be also the same as the parameter estimates of the maximum likelihood, except for this uh, uh, standard deviation or variance of the error term epsilon. So in general, uh, as, as you noticed from this example, then of course, maximum likelihood uh, uh, is really critically dependent on the on the parametric distributional assumptions. Like for example, in the previous case, normality of the error term. So, so what if then uh, the the epsilons are not normally distributed? Then, uh, in some sense, um, OLS in in some cases might be a bit more robust to this kind of because OLS didn't depend on the distributional assumptions. And uh, in some cases, also maximum likelihood can be sensitive to, for example, heteroscedasticity. So in the case of uh, OLS, we found that the OLS estimator was still unbiased and uh, consistent if we had heteroscedasticity. So we could then, um, for example, resort to the just robust standard errors if we have heteroscedasticity. But uh, maximum likelihood estimator would, would be inconsistent if they have heteroscedasticity. So maximum likelihood uh, tends to be a bit more sensitive to the, to the assumptions that are stated. But uh, it turns out very convenient in, in uh, uh, circumstances that where the dependent variable, it might be, for example, discrete or binary. So having just zeros and ones in the, in the dependent variable, or if we have some truncation or censoring. So those will be then the topics of the following uh, uh, video lessons. And, uh, uh, in the next lesson, I will then consider uh, probit and logit models in the case that we have a binary dependent variable consisting of zeros and ones only. And there we will apply then the maximum likelihood estimation. All right, thanks for your attention and continue on the next video.